And now for an in-depth analysis of the address at the National Assembly by the visiting U.S. President, we have Dr. Wu Zhang Yap, Research Fellow at the Sejong Institute, with us here in the studio. Uh, Dr. Wu, welcome to our program and thank you for making time for us thank today. Thank you for having me today. First of all, let's start with the first question. Ever so often, Trump gets a high praise for sounding more presidential than what's expected from a reality show star. Mm -hmm. uh, a standing ovation at the Nas National Assembly, certainly it was a step up from uh, what everyone has come to expect from him. Oh, how would you assess his performance at the South Korea's National Assembly? It was very well received here in South Korea, at least. First of all, many, many people in Korean government and the Korean audiences probably was relieved that there was no surprise right. in his speech because there was a talking that he might say something very rude to Korea with uh, including the trade issues and burden sharing issues and even his view on the ROK-US alliance uh, is somewhat uh, different from his predecessors. So we have some worries, some concerns that he might say something surprising during the speech. But as you just mentioned, that his speech today at our National Assembly was uh, presidential. Uh, and the content itself was uh, very uh, informative for those who do not know about the situation on North Korean issues. So though the speech that he gave at the National Assembly is not only for Korean audiences, but also the U.S. audiences and the global audiences. So that, that gives the idea that how much the U.S. government is going to put uh, efforts in solving the problems in North Korea, not only the nuclear problems, but also the human rights issues in North Korea. Right, as you mentioned, Professor, what was most impressive was how he certainly seemed to have done his homework and research mm -hmm. and uh, made it easier for the world to understand the situation uh, in two Koreas. He actually shed a contrasting light on uh, how far the two sides have come after the mm -hmm. Korean War. And uh, we have a clip from that. Let's, uh, let's go back to the highlights from today's uh, uh, speech at the National Assembly for a few seconds. Okay. More than a million North Koreans died of famine in the 1990s <clears throat> and more continue to die of hunger today. Among children under the age of five, nearly 30% of afflicted and are afflicted by stunted growth due to malnutrition. An estimated 100,000 North Koreans suffer in gulags toiling in forced labor, and enduring torture, starvation, rape, and murder on a constant basis. The horror of life in North Korea is so complete that citizens pay bribes to government officials to have themselves exported aboard as slaves. They would rather be slaves than live in North Korea. To attempt to flee is a crime punishable by death. One person who escaped remarked, when I think about it now, I was not a human being. I was more like an animal. Certainly a great contribution, contribution from President Trump in terms of uh, helping people visualize and realize the facts that many of us have become grown somewhat numb to. So it was a great job by him. Uh, what do you think led to uh, President Trump suddenly uh, shifting to this mode, which we have not come, what we've, which we've not been accustomed to in the past? Uh, because uh, the efforts that he puts in now to solve the nuclear issue of North Korea, uh, he think that the global community needs to do more than to, that is uh, what global community is doing now. So because of the, not only the nuclear issues, but also the human rights issue uh, should be brought up to uh, bring the international attention to the issues in North Korea. Uh, some argues that North Korean nuclear issue is not threatening uh, to United States and South Korea because it's for only for self-defense. And not many people understand, understood that uh, North Korea uses its uh, nuclear weapon to protect its regime when the regime actually uh, abuses the human rights of its own people. So I think Trump is going to expand its 
uh, fighting line with the North Korea, not only in the security area, but also human rights issues. Uh, before, uh, many administrations in the United States uh, did not want to bring human rights issue because uh, to solve the issue of nuclear uh, North, North Korea, they might feel they felt that uh, bringing up the human rights issue uh, does not, did not really help solving or and negotiating with uh, with North Korea. So by bringing up this human rights issue, he he shows his resolve to push really hard to uh, solve the nuclear North Korea issues. Right, uh, certainly a welcome development in mm -hmm. uh, setting the right tone and showing that he's willing to go the distance. Mm -hmm. That set, something that sets him apart from uh, his predecessors in another way, in a more positive way. Overall, the state visit proved to be a very constructive one. Would mm -hmm. you agree, uh, Dr. Wu? Uh, it, but should we be concerned about uh, how uh, things went in terms of discussions on defense costs and trade? Um, maybe uh, one of the goals that Korean government aimed uh, in this summit was to change the view of President Trump on like burden sharing and uh, alliance commitment. Uh, that is why uh, we suggest Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump to visit the Camp Humphreys in, in Pyeongtaek because Korean government paid 92% of construction cost. And it is the most uh, biggest uh, U.S. base overseas. And it's more than and South Korean government uh, paid a lot of not only the money, but also a lot of manpowers in that. But after the visit of the uh, Camp Humphreys, uh, President Trump said that it's only for Korean, to protect Korean, not for United States, and United States also paid for it. So the, the goal that we want to change his uh, view on the burden sharing and the alliance commitment has, is still there. So I think we are going to see a lot of discussions from the United States about uh, burden sharing, uh, of which the negotiation is going to start very soon. So in year 2018, we are going to have tough negotiation with the United States on burden sharing issues. And also for the trade, uh, President Trump, the first thing he mentioned to his soldiers at Camp Humphreys was that uh, he is here to increase the job for the United States. Uh, that's a somewhat uh, not the usual word that you want to say to your soldiers. But he that means how he uh, prioritized the job creation and the trade issues on his agenda. So even though we already began the FTA re, uh, negotiation, I think the pressure from the United States is going to be much harder uh, in coming years. Right. Uh, we, it will be a challenging time for the negotiators mm -hmm. that's involved. But certainly, we can find solace in the fact that instead of just blurting out something positive and mm -hmm. that it's a done deal and backtracking it, mm -hmm. it's good that we will be working things out, taking baby steps, and hashing out the details from here on. And what's important is that we've set a very amicable and friendly mode with the successful uh, visit by the mm -hmm. U.S. president and a very successful hosting by the understanding and mm -hmm. very open-minded and the very hard listening uh, right. President Moon Jae-in. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for your time, uh, uh, Dr. Woo jong -yeop. We appreciate you coming in today. Thank you very much.